so, a system of equations, so you know what an equation is, right? It's got an equal sign. A system of equations uh, is more than one equation. So a system of equations could have two equations, which it does right now for us. Or three equations, four equations. It could have linear equations, which it does for us right now. It could have quadratic equations, it could have cubic equations, it could have all sorts of different kinds of equations. But for us, right now, the systems that we're working with are systems of two equations in two variables, okay, in two variables, almost meaning linear equations, okay. All right, so let's make sure we, we should have our notes out. I will, uh, I'll take 7.3 in a, in a bit if you decide it. after the review you, you feel good about the work you did, you know, you, you felt like you did. Can we ask you, like, questions? Okay, so what we'll do, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna start at almost like we know nothing about systems of equations, kind of, we do. Okay. Uh, systems of equations, we know there are two equations and two variables. We know that we're looking for the solution to that system. We know that, well, we'll talk about what the solution is. Now, when we get to the homework, which is, uh, you know, comes in right about here, if this is, is like at 65 where we're going to wind up today, then this is right here at about 60, 59 or 60, uh, just, uh, well, let's call it 7.3. Solving systems using just simple elimination, where it's like pretty much set up real nice for elimination, and there's not a lot of barrier between us and using elimination to solve the system. Okay. If you have questions on the homework at that point, okay, which will be just in a few minutes, then if Ask away, and, and we'll cover all those questions and uh, clear up all that confusion. And then I'm just going to add a little bit. Still, we're going to do elimination, but it's you know you know how we do. We we get a, a new skill, we make it a little bit trickier, right, build up that that skill a little bit more. So we'll add up the the little bit trickier, right? If if, if 7.3 is at 60, we're going to take it to like 65. Today. Not that much of a new deal. So let's start with uh, first an example of a system of equations. Just like I said, it's multiple equations. There they are, two equations. There's an example of a system of equations. Okay. Uh, let's talk about this first. Uh, this first equation here. How many solutions does this equation have? You don't have to tell me any specific solution, but how many does it have? So why do you say two? Okay, so for a second, forget about this equation existing. Just forget that it exists for just a second. I'm going to talk about just this equation. How many solutions does it have? Oh, no, sorry. Two. two, why do you say two? Because it's an x and a y. You can use either or as you Okay. Well, okay, so that, that kind of brings to mind this. That, uh, that off. I'm to that out here. Uh, one solution is actually a pair pair of numbers, an x and a y. So if we can find a solution, it would be a, a pair of an x and a y together, and they together would make a solution. So how many solutions are there? How many pairs of x and y are there for that equation that, that make it true? One, two? Well, that equation, okay, one. Just that one equation, okay, one. No more than one? Can someone give me an example of a solution to this equation? Tell me a number to plug here, yeah. and a number to oops, I'm to there. a number to plug there, so that we wind up getting that. One. Plug one. Where would we plug one? Two. Seven. What? Don't have to stick with one. But can you tell me a number to put here and a number to put there, so it winds up being zero. Eight. Zero negative eight. Zero and negative. Eight. Let's try it out. Uh, well, that's zero. And negative, negative eight. What's negative, negative eight? eight. So that's true. So that's one solution. All right. So what did we do? We plugged a zero in for that was x. So that was zero for x. And negative eight for y. 
So this is a solution to that equation. Are there more? Yeah. Possibly, especially when we think about positive numbers and negative numbers and decimals and fractions that we can plug in for x and y. Mm -hmm. Is there another combination that we could come up with? Eight? Yeah. You, uh, here, let's, let's try this. So let's plug a two in for x. Can you tell me what you plug in for y so that this comes out to be eight? <coughs> this, what's this here? Negative six. Negative six, so I'm supposed to subtract something to get eight. Negative 6 minus 14, is that 8? Negative 8. So, uh, negative 6 minus 14 is negative 20. Oh, sorry, my bad. But what if we made it negative? So now minus negative 14 is plus 14. Negative 6 plus 14 is? 8. So we've got another one. We have 2 for x, negative 14 for y. So we've got a second one. Yeah. How many can we find? A line's worth. A line's worth, yeah. That's exactly right. So, and how many is that? Infinite. An infinite number of solutions. Okay. So, the point of that whole thing to be re to remind us that a solution to this equation, this first equation, looks like two numbers. Those two numbers, x and y, plug them in. They work in the equation to make the equation true. Remember to refresh. So we just found two solutions, zero, negative eight. Why is that a solution to this equation? Let me plug it in, it's true. Right. We found another one, it was two and negative 14. Is that a solution? No, it is, we found it. We kind of forced it. Why is it a solution? How do we know it's a solution? Because we did it. Because we found it. And uh, if you weren't sure if it was a solution, how could you prove it's a solution? Plug in the 2 for x and the negative 14 for y, and it will be true. And in the other solution, exactly the same thing. That's how we'll know it's a solution. We plug in the x for the x, the y for the y, and it works. Okay. So that's what a solution to an equation looks like. Well, uh, an equation with two variables. Could I have true for both of the equations? Now that's what a solution to a system is. It has to be true for both equations. So we were just, we were pretending like this one didn't exist, but we know that it does. What we are looking for is a solution. This is still two numbers, but that works not only in the first equation, but also the second equation, okay? So we're gonna kind of fast forward through some of this, like graphing, we use graphing. And we quickly found out graphing wasn't so great, but graphing helped us with one thing. It helped us to understand that there's either one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions to a system. There's either one set of numbers that works in both of these equations, no set of numbers that works in both of these equations, or there's an infinite set of equations, set of uh, pairs of numbers that works in both of these equations. Mm -hmm. And the graphs showed us that. Here's a, you know, if I were to graph these two, I would find that, I'm not saying this is a graph of these two, because I'm just throwing lines out there randomly. But wherever they crossed, that was the solution. So these will cross somewhere, and we'll, we can find the solution that way. But that's not a great approach because it's not accurate unless you have very sharp pencils and very good eyes and very good graph paper and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then if the answers are, are a fraction, it's hard to find that. It's hard to see that. Excuse interruption. Please release high school boys basketball team. Please release high school boys Six years dead. Yeah. I've never not had the team Anyway, what we're looking for is some set of numbers that works here and here. We also tried, uh, we also learned about substitution. We substituted you know, something into this equation using this equation and we solved it that way. Then, the last time we learned something new, what we learned was this. This uh, approach called elimination. 
Here's a quick example of what elimination looked like. So we're up to 7.3 now. All right. So this is exactly the kind of way, or it's very, very close uh, to what we, you would have used in the homework that's technically doing today. Okay. You would have done this. You would have added the left sides of the equation together and the right sides of the equation together, and one of the variables will go away. What It'll get you? eliminated. I didn't even see. was grafting, 7.2 was, uh, was substitution and 7.3 was elimination. Pay close attention to elimination, it's not, not that tricky. We're just going to combine like terms and, and one of those terms is going to just disappear. It's going to get eliminated. All right, so we're going to add the two left sides together. Okay. What's going to happen is we get 7x plus negative 3x and we get how many x? 4x. Now here's the beauty part. What happens when we add negative y to y? You get nothing, you get elimination, exactly. So now on the right side, you get negative or you get eight plus negative twelve. Negative four. Negative four. Now let's just pause for a second. That y got eliminated. And that's really useful to us because the problem before was you know I can't I can't just take this one equation and solve it for x and y. There's an infinite number of possibilities. But by using these two equations together, we eliminated the y and now we have an easy to solve equation. Right? Divide by four on both sides. Now I have half of the solution. Why do I say half of the solution? Because the solution is an ordered pair. Yes, exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. So the solution is an ordered pair of two numbers. We only have one of the numbers. The other number is, is the y. How do we find the y? Plug it in Which one? Any. Right. Either one. It does not matter. Uh, I'll throw it in this one because the y is a positive and there's a one there. It's going to be easy to solve. Seven times negative one. Seven to both sides, y is equal to negative five. The solution, as shall be said, is an ordered pair. The ordered pair, negative one, negative five. I'm going to do the fastest job I can. That seems easier than 7.2. <laughs> I would say that it is. But we want, we want all these skills. There are times when. I have two equations that I want to know the solution to that system of equations in. If, uh, if I just want a really quick answer, a rough estimate, I'll look at the graph. Sometimes it's just a lot easier to do substitution because it's just set up to do substitution. It's just faster that way. And then sometimes this elimination method. And you know this is preferable to most people most of the time. And so it's a, it's a good skill to have when solving systems. So I'm going to just check and make sure the solution works for both of these really fast. Negative 3 times negative 1 minus negative 1 equal, or sorry, negative 5, that's what y is, equals 8. So 3 plus 5, that is 8, so check. Uh, 7 times negative 1 plus negative 5. Well, let's see, negative 7 minus 5, mm -hmm. that's negative. So it did check out in this equation as well. So we found the solution by elimination, and we checked the solution. Just double check, just to make sure, and indeed we were right. All right, so now we've seen a real basic elimination problem. Let me make sure that this one is a pretty basic one too. Um, no, it's not. So let's, let's get another more you know, straightforward one. Negative three x. I'm gonna have you guys give this a sh give uh, this a try. Here's five y equals negative seven. Negative four x plus five y equals fourteen. Double check I didn't make any errors. Down. Okay. 
So using that same approach, adding both equations together and seeing that clearly one of these things is going to get eliminated and solving for one of the variables and substituting that in and finding the second. Give that a try. Look at your notes for the one that we just did. Or you can write this down and then, then when you have it, I could, I could flip back to the previous example so you can see that and, and just follow along with that. I think that's what I'll do. Make sure you get this written down. Write down these two equations. I'm going to flip back to the previous page so you have a, an example to reference. I'm going to write it down, and if you uh, don't have it all the way written down, I can come around and copy it off of this. What so you should do after you have it written down is. Add the two equations together. See that something gets eliminated and solve for the first variable. I'm going to jump back to the previous page to have an example. So we add these together. Negative 3x minus 4x is? Whatever. It's just whatever. Dude, I thought that was a 5. I was looking up there. Uh, so negative 3x minus 4x is negative 7x. Mm -hmm. Then we have the, the y's together. Negative 5y plus 5y. Yeah, so that's why. That's why. Why? Negative 7 plus 14. 7, 7. Mm -hmm. And we divide by negative 7. X is negative 1. All right, so we have x. So we have half the solution. So we've probably done about uh, 90 really nothing to figure out what y is. Just need to plug that in for x, plug for y. So I'll use the second equation. Probably. No. So plug that in for x, negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. So 4 plus 5y equals 14, so I'm going to subtract 4. Minus 4 minus 4. 5y equals 10. Divide by 5. 5 equals 2. I knew that. <laughs> so the solution uh, is an ordered pair. That ordered pair is negative 1, 2. That's all we have to do. There it is. What are we finding? We found an ordered pair that. When we plug the, the negative 1 in for x and the 2 in for y, this equation will be true. And when we plug the negative 1 in for this x and the 2 for this y, this equation is also true. And that's the only possible solution there is. Shall we? Actually, I messed it up really early. <laughs> like, right there. <laughs> nice. Now, when it's just all, when it's just sitting there, what we call low hanging fruit, just waiting for you to just take the steps and do it. What do you think? Is that is that good? Or do you want to do one more like that, just like that, where it's yeah. just nice and set up, ready to go? Let's do one. More. I don't know. I need to consult the fonts. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. Let's do this one. Three X. Minus y equals 30. Let's write this one down quickly because I'm going to switch it over in a minute or two. Uh, 3x minus y equals 30. Negative 3x plus 7y equals 6. Okay. I did not So you have an example to follow, just in case uh, your notes got a little messed up or something. This example. I did it wrong. All right, we're going to combine them together. Something's going to get eliminated, and we're going to solve for the first variable, which whichever one that turns out to be. 3x minus 3x eliminated. Zero, nothing. 3x goes on the other end. So negative y. It leaves the 
plus 7y. 6y plus 6y. So here we have 6y. <laughs> On the other side, 30 plus 6. If it was plus y, would it be 8y? It would be if it, if it were. 6y equals 36. 30 plus 6 is 36. Divide by 6. Y is 6. Why 6? Why is 6? Because sometimes it's 36. Oh, we know it. Uh, now that we know that y is 6, we're going to figure out x by doing what? Plug it in. Plug it in. Into this one or this one. I saw some people use this one, some people use that one. It will not matter. I'm going to use this one. 3x, negative 3x plus 7 times 6 equals 6. Negative 3x plus 42 equals 6. You can stare at me. I'm not staring at you. Track 42 from both sides, negative 3x equals negative 36. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, x is 12. Oh, I see that. 12, 6. Okay, I see that. Come on, Billy. I'm sorry, Shelby. You're usually smarter than yourself. Yeah. Okay. You go, you get those. What happened to the smart kid you left in 2006? How did you not get any? <laughs> what? How did you not get any? Really you just stayed up till 6 a.m. and got up at 9 a.m. every day. That's still a little bit sleepy. Yeah, it's not It's about still like three hours. Three hours, yeah. That's not, that's not normal for a human. Don't it worry is about if you have children. It is if you're partying like me. All right, that's <laughs> cool. How is yours? Stop wasting your time. <laughs> Time for asking me how my break was during homework time. Okay. The homework times for homework, though. Well, now each person uses their homework time is up to them. Now, now that we've gotten those basics down, now let's look at a situation where it's close to being perfectly set up, but not quite set up for us. Or if we do collect like terms, let's see what happens. No, like you put the 6x oh. like a okay. Okay. So we just rearrange a little bit. 6x minus 8y equals 36. It's nicer to look at this way. Okay, that's good. But what happens when you try to add these together? Does anything get eliminated? No. Pay attention. The precipice of something extraordinary here. 6x plus 6x, what's that? 12. Oh, 12x. It, all, it, it almost felt like it might get eliminated, but it, what happened is it, like it doubled. I guess 6x plus 6x is 12x. What would it need to look like for these to eliminate each other? Just subtract negative. You've got to have a negative there. Is it, I, can I, just, I can't just throw a negative on stuff like that, can I? Yeah, you can. Well, let's just throw negatives on things. I mean, it's, we can get there, but it's, it's not like you can just take a negative sticker and stick it right there. And work there can be that numbers, there can be yeah. Well, it'll mess everything up. It'll instead of ne instead of six x minus y, it'll be negative six x minus y. We can't just just put a negative there. We can get a negative to be there, but we, we have to use math. We have to follow the rules here. You can. Wait. Well, you could change the order that way. Well, what if you were to get y on one side and x is on the other? Well, we do like that these are lined up. I think we should keep it that way. To get, to get a negative on that, that 6x there, well, what I really need to do is to turn a positive into a negative, I need to multiply by a negative. Now, the thing about that is, I can't just multiply parts of an equation by negative 1. The rule for both sides, right? The rule for equations, whenever we're manipulating equations in any way, we all do the same thing to both sides. What I want is to multiply this by a negative one, so I have to multiply everything by a negative one. So I'll we'll multiply this side by a negative one, we'll multiply this side by a negative one. And it really just means that 6x equals negative y. No, negative minus y equals negative 
So we're just bringing this equation down. And then when we multiply it by a negative, we distribute the negative to this entire side. We get negative 6x plus y equals negative 15. And you're adding 36 million. What are you doing? This, <laughs> this equation Tell me, shall we? is just, I just copied it directly from here. I just brought it down to the next step. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I was really confused. <laughs> the second equation is just this equation, but I multiply both sides by a negative 1. Mm -hmm. And then that's where that second equation comes from. Okay, okay. you just copied it. Can I switch it green and black? It's like a greenish oh, it's black. Green. It's green. Hmm. Stuart, do you have a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Good to know in math class. Now, let's not lose focus. Let's not lose focus. So we multiply both sides by a negative one. We distribute the negative one. We got negative six plus y equals negative fifteen. And now it's exactly like the like the previous two examples. It's ready to go. If we add them together, the x's will get eliminated. So we'll, we'll do that together quickly, and then I'll give you an example where you're going to have to manipulate a little bit set it up to work for elimination. So 6x minus 6x is 0. Eight y, negative 8y plus y is negative 7y. Yeah. 36 minus 15 is uh, 21. Divide by negative 7. Y is negative 3. Now we know y is negative 3, so we're going to find out what x is. Let's use this guy here. 6x minus negative 3 equals 15. 6x plus 3 equals 15. Subtract 3 on both sides. 6x equals 12. Divide by 6. x equals 2. 2, negative 3. Okay. So we've got this idea of elimination. It's a nice little tool. It's helpful. Pretty easy. But sometimes we have to do a little bit of work to get it ready for elimination to work. So just multiply it by the for, for starters, yeah, yeah. For starters, we're gonna just we're gonna see like, oh, if that was just negative, that'd be great. We'll make it negative by multiplying both sides, right? Both sides, not just the one thing, but both sides of the equation by negative one. Yeah. So, you give it a try. Here's an example, I'm ready for you. It doesn't matter which one, but uh, probably I would guess you multiplied this by a negative one and this by a negative. So on the right side, I'm going to get 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And remember on this side, everything needs to get multiplied by negative 1. It needs to get distributed to the 7x, which gives me negative 7x, and to the negative 3y, which gives me plus 3y. So now I have that equation with the negative 7x that I can use against this equation, 7x minus 2y equals 5, so that the x's will cancel each other out and when we do that, 7x minus 7x is 0. zero. And negative 2y plus 3y, y, which is minus 1y. And 5 minus 4 is 1, so that would be y is 1. I have to work that hard at all. Can't you get it? I found it. It didn't have a y. Uh, 7x uh, minus 2 times 1 is 3. Minus 2 times 1 equals 5. 7x minus 2 equals 5, 7x equals 7, we add 2 to both sides, x equals 1, solution is 1, comma. Yay! This is just like getting to the little bit trickier stuff, this is just an introduction to a system of equations that needs a little help to have elimination work. Different of uh, needs a little bit of a different help, right? 
Like if I try to add the 5x and the 3x, I get 8x. That didn't get eliminated. If I try to add the 2y and the negative 4y, I'll get negative 2y. And it's not like making something in here negative is going to change anything. What do we do? Trying to get the x's or the y's to eliminate each other, to be opposite of each other. <coughs> and we, we've, in the previous two examples, we've multiplied both sides by something. It's just that something was negative 1. But we could multiply by anything. Anybody have a, an inkling of what we, we could eliminate? Add Which, what's that? We add. OK, so maybe try something else. Maybe try adding. But what, what did you just like the add one. I'm guessing would you multiply by 1 instead of negative? Well, multiplied by 1 doesn't change anything, right? Well, anything times 1 is just, it stays the oh, same. Well. Yeah. <laughs> multiplying 2 over 1? Multiplying by 2? In which equation? Mm, so multiply this equation by 2? Yeah. Oh, yes. Let's try that. Yes. Yes. So we're going to multiply both sides of the top equation by 2. Multiply this side by 2, and this side by 2. You would have to you can see what's about to happen. When we multiply this side by 2, we get 10x plus 4y. Plus 4y. Oh, that looks good. Equals, remember to multiply this side by 2 as well, so we get 32. And the second equation, we can just bring it over the exact, exactly the way it looks. And look what happened when we multiply the top equation by 2, we got a positive 4y. Wow. So now what's going to happen when we add them together? Gonna cancel each other out. What's going to cancel each other out? The y's. The y's will cancel each other out when we add these together. Let's do that together real quick. 10x plus 3x is 13x. Y's eliminate equals 52. Divide by 13. And x is 4. We know that x is 4. We'll figure out what y is. I'll use this first equation 5x plus 2y equals 16. So 5 times 4 plus 2y. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use this changed equation because, like, this equation has all the same solutions as this original equation. Uh, so you have 20 plus 2y. 16, subtract 20 on both sides, get 2y equals subtract 20, negative 4, and y equals negative 2. So our solution is 4, negative 2. So the idea here is to use elimination, but we're going to have to help one of the equations along a little bit so that either x or y will get eliminated. Start, you're going to start to look at these equations like that. You're going to see, oh, this is a 2y, this is a negative 4y, and I could easily multiply 2 by 2 to get 4, and then I'll eliminate each other. Let's, let's look for that in this next example. See something we can multiply by that could get the x's or the y's to be opposite and to, can't, to uh, eliminate each other? Can you go back to that other one so I can write it down, please? numbers that would eliminate each other? The 2x and the 6x? They're kind of close in a way, right? Because what could I do to this 2x? Times by 3. By 3. 
Okay, or we can divide this by two. That's a, that's a good idea. Except for that we would have to divide this by two and divide this by two as well. <coughs> and then we get five halves and 19 halves. That's, to, that's correct, but it, you know, we got the fractions, and maybe that's. Divide by one. Your vote, maybe not. But if we were to multiply this by a three. Okay, so now I'm just kind of using some shorthand. I'm throwing parentheses around the entire equation. We understand that means that everything gets multiplied by three. So 6x plus 9y equals 15. But is that going to eliminate this, anything in this equation? Six. Are these going to eliminate what I add together? That would be like a negative, negative three. Ah, uh, okay, so we use a negative three. Yeah. We get a negative six x. We get a smaller eraser. We get a negative nine and a negative fifteen. <coughs> there we go, very good. So now we get six x minus six x is eliminated. Five y minus nine y. Negative 4y, 19 minus 15, 4, divided by negative 4, divided by negative 4y is negative 1. And now I'll just go back, we can use <coughs> any of these equations we want. I'll use this one for no reason in particular. 6x plus 5 times negative 1, which we found to be y. 6x plus 5 equals 19. Add 5 to both sides, we get 24 divide by 6, x is 4. Or negative 1. <coughs> now I'm on to do this hash. Alright, so just to review, because the next example is going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be it, it's going to be it for today, it's going to be the final level of, uh, of complexity. In this example, multiply by 2, so that 4y and negative 4y eliminated each other. In this one, we got a little trickier, we multiplied by a negative number, a negative 3, to make this not only a 6, but a negative 6, so that the x's would eliminate each other. And in the next example, we would like the x's or the y's to be opposite each other so that they eliminate each other. I'll give you a little hint. It's not going to be like the last two where we just take one equation and multiply it by something. Both equations, multiply them by different subjects. Right? So take a couple minutes and, and, and try to work that out yourself. Come around and help you, of course. Try and figure out, you know, what should I multiply the first equation by? What should I multiply the second equation by? Because you're going to multiply them both by something. What should I multiply them by? What am I going to eliminate? Uh, yesterday with my other class, we only have five people in that class. We came up with three different approaches that all came up with the correct solution. Figure out how to eliminate the x's or how to eliminate the y's. It's up to you. Let's go ahead and work this one out together. So the idea here is we're going to multiply the top equation, right, both sides of it, by something. We're going to multiply the second equation by probably something else. Uh, the both sides of it by that something else. And then we're going to come up with two equations that are ready for elimination. So the thing that I think when I'm looking at this is, I see this is already a positive and this is a negative. That's one of the things that I like. I like one of them to be positive, one of them to be negative. So if I were to multiply this by a 3, and this one by 4, and both equations are going to wind up with 12x's. One is going to have a positive 12x, one's going to have a negative 12x, and when I add them, I get a little bit. So 3 times 4x is 12x. 3 times 5y is 15y. 
and 3 times 35. What's that? 3 times 4x, 3 times 5y, 3 times 35. Multiply both sides of the equation by 3. Wouldn't you want to keep the sign in the negative 3 to the same side, or is it not? This is the top equation. Yeah, I know. So when I, when I did the bottom equation, 4 times negative 3x is negative 12x, mm -hmm. which is good. 4 times 2y is 8y. 4 times negative 9, negative 36. Times that. Right. But if you multiply 3 times 4 up there, you just be 12. That's what we have, 12x. Well, oh. I, I didn't understand if you guys um, was too much going on. Okay, so this, there's a lot going on. This equation on the top here is just, comes right from here. It's, this is the top equation, it comes from the top equation. It's just the top equation multiplied by three. Multiply everything by three, that's where this comes from. Multiply everything in this equation by four, that's where this comes from. Yeah. We have two equations now. Like this equation has all the same solutions as this one. This equation has all the same solutions as this one. So we find the solution to this system, we find the solution to this system. We've set it up in such a way that the x's are opposite. 12x and negative 12x, when we add it together, we eliminate the x's, and that now gives us uh, 23y equals Divide by 23, and y is <coughs> 3. Now that we know y is 3, you can plug it in here, or here, or here, or here, it doesn't matter. Wherever you plug it in, you can find x. So we've got 12x and negative 12x by multiplying this equation by 3, because 3 times 4 is 12. Multiplying this equation by 4, because 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and it's all ready to go, ready to have the x's eliminated when we add. Okay. I'm going to give you one in, in a second, put the homework up on the board. I'll work the example out in a while. Okay, but before I do that, are there any questions about this one? No, I just can't remember that no way you can do that. The top part. Mm -hmm. That's why we that's why I kind of rushed yeah, to, to work that this one out together. Because I can see some of you were kids I'm not quite sure what to do. Mm -hmm. So now you know what to do. We're gonna multiply each equation by something different. So that the result is either the x is your choice, either the x or the y is just a quick note here, like I could make, like you can multiply this by a 2 and this by a 5, they both be 10, right? So I can multiply this equation by 2, and maybe this one by a negative 5, so I get a negative 10y. 10y and negative 10y. It's up to you, it's whichever way you want to go. Okay. So either way, x's or y's, eliminate either one. Mm, that's exactly the same thing. Here. 